So we'll start by settling the body, adopting a stable, comfortable, upright position, serviceable for meditation. So we think about keeping our feet flat and our back straight, torso open, hands in the lap right over left with the palms upturned and the thumbs gently touching. Our eyes are gently closed or slightly open, making sure we let in enough light to remain alert. We try to maintain an awareness of not slouching, not leaning. But we also let go of any unnecessary tension or rigidity in the body. Relaxing into a stable, comfortable, upright position. Just allowing the body to fall into place. Then we begin to let go of attending to the external world. Allowing sights and sounds to be as they are without investigation. Moving the mind, moving the awareness inward and straining it just the body and mind. Beginning to concentrate that awareness in the present by attending closely to the physical sensation that accompanies the in-breath and the out-breath in the area around the nostrils. Giving ourselves the instruction to notice quickly when anything other than that one physical sensation is arising in the mind and without judgment or frustration to lift our awareness up from those Distractions in place, our attention firmly, but gently again and again on the breath. And then when the mind becomes more calm, we generate a broad, 
altruistic motivation for our time, taking a moment to intentionally try to widen our circle of concern, trying to embrace countless sentient beings within the field of our practice. Recognizing that just like oneself, every sentient being in every realm of existence deeply wishes to be happy, deeply wishes to be free of even the slightest negativity. That every action from morning until night for every sentient being is entirely driven by those goals. And that every sentient being feels the sting of suffering in exactly the same way as oneself. No sentient being has a claim to being successful in accomplishing true happiness, in accomplishing being completely free from all negativity that is greater than any other sentient being. So we think that the most reasonable, most logical way of using one's life is to work for the happiness of every single sentient being without exception. And to be successful in that endeavor depends entirely on the content of my own mind, my own familiarities, my own habits, my own tendencies. So the purpose of this time is to establish those constructive, beneficial, supportive tendencies and habits and familiarities, ways of thinking and acting that will cause me to become more and more beneficial to those around me. And visualize oneself in a much larger open space, surrounded by all sentient beings, visualized as human. Your father in this life, on your right, your mother in this life, on your left. Those immediately in front of you are those that you have conflict with, difficulty with. And behind you are your closest friends, loved ones. And encircling you in all directions are strangers. And begin to think, there's absolutely no valid reason for me to work only for the benefit of those behind me, my loved ones, my friends. while at the same time feeling averse, wishing to harm 
those in front of me, those that I struggle with. to engage in those actions is born out of simply the wish for one's own comfort. To support those who we expect to receive support from and to be hostile to those who we think are acting against our interests. There's no reason for me to have been born human if I allow those drives to be, to be what motivate my actions. Any animal could strive in that way. The happiness of the self alone. The real purpose of having been born human is to strive for something greater. No animal can strive to bring every sentient being to perfect happiness. And yet with the self-cherishing mind for countless lifetimes, beginningless lifetimes, I have discriminated friend, enemy, and stranger. And attachment and hatred have arisen. and all misfortune that has ever impacted me has flowed from that. Every negativity in my own mind and every negative action The mind of anger produces the enemy. The mind of attachment produces the friend. And the mind of ignorance produces the stranger. And yet again and again, I help only out of attachment and harm, out of anger. Try to get a sense by looking back at your own life and how these mental states are operating in this way.
We can think that when the mind is mixed with affliction, these distinctions arise as though they were self-supporting. And if they were, then they should have ex existed beginninglessly, and they should exist endlessly, which makes a mockery out of the concept of enlightenment. Well, the Buddha's mind shines equally on behalf of every sentient being, like the sun. The Buddha's mind is free of those afflictions, those discriminations that create friend, enemy, and stranger. given the ways in which sentient beings have played different roles. We can see that, in fact, those that one labels as one's enemy have played the role of one's own mother countless times. And the only true enemy are the afflictions. The only thing we ought to harm is that inner enemy, the actual cause of my suffering. When I look with the wisdom mind, I will never find the friend of the mind of attachment or the enemy of the mind of hatred. These are merely names, merely words imputed by ignorance. To review these lines of analysis and try to come to a strong determination to put time and energy and effort into undermining states of mind that 
or responsible for these discriminations of sentient beings. These distorted perceptions And then when you're ready, we'll come back together. We'll dedicate. So recollect your altruistic motivation and think that by having engaged in this contemplation, you've actualized that motivation, which has generated positive energy in the mind and think that you freely offer the fruit of your practice, that positive energy for the benefit of all sentient beings without exception. Thinking strongly when that positive energy ripens, may it serve as a cause 
and conditioned to eliminate war and conflict, poverty, famine, disease, disasters, all painful inner and outer conditions. May it fully ripen the minds of all sentient beings. May they quickly meet perfect teachers and arise in the state of full enlightenment. May I too achieve the state of enlightenment so that I might work for the benefit of sentient beings perfectly. May any obstacles facing the Guru's long life be completely dispelled. May I and all sentient beings in this moment come under the joyful care and guidance of enlightened beings. May we be guided and protected until we swiftly achieve that state of enlightenment. Thank you.